Okay, uh, so I think we would be starting uh, now. So <clears throat> uh, today our speaker is uh, Dr. Danilo Brizzi from University of uh, Pisa, and his talk is going to be about uh, the uh, metasurfaces in MRI and uh, um, wireless power transfer. So uh, I think we would have a short introduction of our speaker now by uh, Agustina Mondrico. Uh, well, not, it's, a, it's a little oh, bit different. Sorry, I, I, I understand. I understand. It. Don't worry so, about uh, it. Just, just <laughs> before that, I would like to uh, ask people to who are not the speakers uh, to turn off their cameras during uh, the talk because that would uh, slightly interfere with the presentation usually, and also turn off their microphones. But if you have any questions, uh, you can raise your hand in Zoom. There is a button for that, uh, and I'll uh, give you some time at the point to ask your question, or you can just type your question in the chat and I'll uh, ask uh, uh, Danilo at some point where it's convenient to uh, answer your question. So with that, uh, I, I would ask uh, Agustina to give a short presentation of- uh, and Yes, now no, I just want to say a few words because Danilo made a presentation where there is the introduction of our group uh, and so on. A um, few years, uh, several years ago, I regret I couldn't come in St. Petersburg. There was a NURSI conference and I couldn't make it. And now I regret it really much. <laughs> so my hope is that maybe in the near future, we, we can solve this problem with this coronavirus and we can start traveling again. And I just want to thank you for the nice invitation. Normally, you also are invited to uh, come in Pisa as uh, soon as it will be possible. Uh, normally, it's uh, hotter than St. Petersburg, so you can come in winter here. Uh, but in any case, uh, I would like you listen to uh, Danilo, that is uh, one of my smartest students. Now is uh, a postdoc uh, student in our group, and uh, uh, I. I, I, I'm sure that uh, it will uh, uh, give a nice talk on these things that we are working. And uh, consider that if we can collaborate in uh, future research or uh, European project or whatever, we are open to collaboration. This is uh, all I want to, to say. So I leave the floor to Danilo. And uh, I'm uh, um, involved in another meeting. I think I will join you maybe in the next hour, it will, it will take one hour as soon as I understand uh, about this, this, this talk. So uh, I would like to join uh, the discussion. If I cannot do it uh, um, again, uh, a lot to everybody, okay? Okay, uh, thank you, Agustina. So with that, uh, I'll probably start with uh, Daniel's presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, the introduction, uh, Agustino, and thank you all for the invitation. Now I will share the screen. There we go. Okay, uh, now uh, let's start the presentation. So as Mikhail before introduced, uh, the title of the presentation is uh, Magnetic Metasurfaces Design for MRI and Wireless Power Transfer Applications. Um, so um, I would like to spend a few words to present first of all our group in PISA. Uh, we are actively involved in different areas of uh, biomedical uh, uh, research uh, in electromagnetics. Beside MRI and WPT, we are also involved in designing innovative uh, antennas for microwave imaging uh, to develop hardware for uh, biological characterization of tissues and in a, a low frequency innovative uh, imaging system. The group is led by Professor Agostino Monorchio that uh, you have seen before. And um, within the lab, we have uh, Dr. Nuncia Fontana, uh, which is uh, the assistant professor and three other PhD students, Elisa Gianpietri, Eliana Canicati, and Sabrina Rotundo. Now, um, let's move to the outline of the, of the presentation. Uh, first of all, we will introduce um, the concept of magnetic metasurfaces uh, for low frequency applications it means that we are uh, in particular uh, interested in um, those applications that are related to um, magnetic resonance imaging and wireless power transfer. 
so uh, up to a few hundreds megahertz. Then uh, we will introduce uh, one uh, of our first applications of um, magnetic metasurfaces uh, for um, the coupling of MRI coils and what we have called distributed magnetic trap circuit. After that, we will uh, show some um, results that um, we have achieved using metasurfaces for improvement in wireless power transfer um, systems. And finally, we will introduce uh, the latest concept in which um, we are currently involved, uh, which is the metasurfaces response homogenization. And we will discuss some possible outcomes in MRI and WPT. And finally, uh, some conclusions will follow. OK, uh, so um, everybody knows that uh, metamaterials um, uh, is a very hot topic uh, nowadays. In the last two uh, decades, a lot of uh, research work has been carried out uh, in order to explore this, uh, this topic. Uh, basically, uh, metamaterials and metasurfaces are bidimensional, tridimensional matrix of elements that are uh, commonly refers to uh, unit cells that shows a subwavelength dimension. Uh, meaning that uh, their dimensions are very small with respect to the wavelength of the applied electromagnetic field. Uh, they are able to confer uh, artificial properties in terms of electromagnetic properties to the overall material. So uh, different shapes and geometries have been described so far in the literature, including just uh, the most common Swiss rolls, solenoids, split rings, and various planar spiral configurations. Now, our interest is uh, about magnetic metasurfaces um, for low frequency applications. So in this case, um, uh, we are dealing with a thin slab of um, magnetic resonant inclusions. And in particular, in this case, the most common shapes for the unit cell is the split ring or spirosonator. And the possible span of applications it is quite broad. I mean, we have um, a signal to noise ratio enhancement in uh, magnetic resonance imaging. But, but also um, performance improvement in wireless power transfer applications and also electromagnetic absorbers can be designed exploring this kind of, uh, uh, of elements. Um, so now we have set the, the ground of the, of the presentation and we can start uh, with the first uh, topic, which is the distributed magnetic traps for MRI coils decoupling. Okay, just to introduce the concept, uh, um, magnetic resonance imaging um, is quite known that is an established and diffuse diagnostic methodology based on the nuclear magnetic resonance of uh, chemical elements. And um, it allows to achieve a, a very high resolution, millimetric resolution for in vivo studies. And uh, we have an excellent contrast, especially for soft tissue. If we um, said that it is a non-invasive and free from ionizing radiation as technique, uh, then these properties uh, make uh, MRI one of the most important diagnostic methodology um, as long as uh, computed tomography. Uh, the nuclear of chemical elements uh, that present a non-zero spin angular momentum uh, can be excited by a radio frequency magnetic field. So proton loop, for example, which is the most um, common elements inside tissue can be excited by a radio frequency magnetic field that uh, must oscillate according to the Larmor frequency, which is the exact frequency that we have to use to excite uh, protons. When the radio frequency pulse is removed, uh, the total induced magnetization returns to its original state with two relaxation times that are the two main parameters for an MRI image, which is the T1 and T2 relaxation times. And what happens during these relaxation times, the nuclei emit back the energy acquired during the radio frequency stimulation and produce the useful radio frequency signal, which is called the free induction decay signal. Okay, now let's move to um, the, the problem that we have to solve, mutual coupling. Uh, mutual coupling is one of the most uh, challenging design tasks in MRI. And this happens also for a single frequency array and for multiple to net direct coils. Um, array configurations are particularly advantageous uh, to be employed in MRI to expand the field of view, to increase the signal to noise ratio and uh, to reduce the total scan time. 
Moreover, with the double tuned configuration, for instance, we, we can um, acquire information from different nuclei, and this can guarantee uh, images that are um, uh, full of information um, about anatomic details, for example, and physiological state. The problem is that inside the uh, MRI board, the available space for the coils uh, is very limited. And so uh, rep coils are placed very close to each other. And um, we have a very high missile coupling. Missile coupling then causes uh, signal to noise ratio degradation and lower the efficiency. Uh, however, the advantage that we can achieve with the array configuration pushed the research uh, in order to find a lot of solutions to solve this problem. And here in this slide, we can see some of the most common solution so far appeared. Uh, the magnetic wall configuration, um, the overlap technique, um, the induced current elimination technique, and the, um, the lamped trap circuit for double tuned configuration. So what is our, our proposal? Um, we developed a general procedure to design distributed passive resonators for the decoupling of MRI RF coils. So these uh, miniaturized resonators can be placed in between the coils and these can be achieved determine their minimum number for decoupling. And in this way, we can also minimize the resisted losses. One of the major advantage of this technique is that there are no physical connections between the decoupling resonators and the radio frequency coils so, can, so that we can um, obtain a very mechanically robust uh, setup. So the, the general flow chart of our proposed decoupling approach uh, starts from the mutual coupling estimation between MRI coils. Then uh, we will estimate the mutual coupling between the MRI coils and the single filter element so the decoupling resonator. Our analytical model is then able to um, calculate the required number for the decoupling. And finally, we have to place, uh, we will see later better, careful the resonators inside the array. Uh, sorry, Dan Dan Daniela, what, yes? what do you mean by miniaturized uh, resonators? Uh, yes, why is it now, uh, yes, we will see in the next slide uh, what what is means by miniaturized resonators? Oh, okay. So yeah. So okay. So we have said that we have um, a, a method in which we use miniaturized resonators. In particular, we use spy resonators. Spy resonators, as you can see from the CST uh, model on the on the slide, are, are very small um, resonators that um, um, that are made by a spiral shape. Uh, rectangular, square, and different uh, uh, in different geometries that are self-resonant at a particular frequency. So, in order to use this uh, particular element uh, uh, for filter design, uh, it is important to uh, accurate estimate the lamped RLC equivalent model in order to um, use them in the design of the filter. Uh, so far, a lot of analytical models have been presented in the literature but they are not inaccurate, accurate enough to uh, estimate the RLC equivalent uh, method. So we first developed a characterization setup based on a probe loop um, mutually coupled with the spy resonator under test. Uh, so uh, since they are very small um, element, um, it, is, um, it is impossible to define uh, from a, a full wave point of view a port um, at the extremities of these, uh, of these shapes. So, we can characterize them um, using a probe loop mutually coupled with, with them. So uh, this numerical setup is assisted by a magnetostatic approach that we use to estimate the mutual coupling coefficient between the probe loop and the spy resonator. Basically, we use Biosavar formulation to compute the magnetic field produced by the spy resonator and uh, which is concatenated with the probe loop. This can give us the mutual coupling coefficient between these two object. Now, uh, we can make uh, an equivalent circuit of this, um, of this configuration. Uh, so we have the probe loop. If we start from the left of this, uh, of this circuit, we have the probe loop, which is mutually coupled with the spy resonator, which is a series RLC circuit. Now, our method consists in uh, characterized first the probe loop and uh, the mutual coupling coefficient between the probe loop and the spy resonator under test. At this point, uh, if we consider this um, equivalent circuit, the only unknowns are the RLC series uh, 
element uh, describing the spirosonators. So we can compare a full wave simulation of the probe loop plus the spirosonator under test, and um, we can acquire the uh, input impedance of this system. At this point, we can fit this analytical model with the full wave simulation and find the best RLC combination which produces the best fit with, um, with the full wave. In this way, we can retrieve the unique combination of RLC that describes the spirosonator um, properties, electromagnetic properties. Of course, beside numerical simulation, we fabricated prototypes um, exploding PCB technology of the probe loop and the spirosonators. And we evaluated square and rectangular spirosonators with different number of tons. Now you can see better what we meant by miniaturized resonators. Uh, this resonator in the picture is um, 13 millimeter uh, and seven millimeter of external sides. So they are very small in this sense, six tons. And what we can see from the graph on the right is that um, a lot of important information can be um, achieved um, by studying spirosonators for different uh, shapes and different number of tons. In particular, the last graphs on the right is the Q factor of the spirosonator. So um, for, um, the, um, for fixed external dimension, we can see that uh, a precise number of tons can give us the best Q factor. And in this way, we can choose uh, properly the resonator to be used uh, for a specific application. Okay, now the point is that uh, um, we know uh, the RLC properties of a particular resonator. So now we can come back to our uh, aim, original aim, which is the coils decoupling. Um, so we modeled all the interactions between two generic MRI RF coils, uh, which we numbered one and two in the equivalent circuit on the right, and N spirosonators that are used as distributed magnetic trap circuit. Uh, all the N spirosonators uh, are indicated uh, with element three. This can be done because we consider spirosonators placed uh, enough far from each other. And so in this case, we neglect the respective mutual coupling coefficients between them. So the N equations relative to them can be condensed into a single condition. Now, if we express the current flowing in the spirosonator, I3 as a function of the current flowing in the MRI coils, I1 and I2, we can achieve uh, the decoupling conditions that we highlighted in the slide and find both the reactants that uh, the single element uh, must have in order to decouple, to compensate the mutual coupling between uh, uh, MRI coils and the minimum number of resonator N that must be used in order to minimize resistive uh, losses, in particular the real component of the mutual uh, coupling. So uh, this uh, configuration uh, has an equivalent physical interpretation in terms of uh, effective permeability. Why? Uh, we know that um, mutual coupling between coils I and J um, is, ex um, is expressed by the mutual coupling between these two coils when they are placed in vacuum multiplied by uh, the magnetic permeability of the medium in which they are immersed. Uh, now, the um, spirosonator's insertion changes the magnetic properties of the medium in which the RF coils are immersed. And in particular, we can define an equivalent permeability as a function of the system lumped elements. So um, the effective permeability um, can be nulled. And in the point in which uh, this permeability is zero, uh, the spirosonators act like a diamagnetic uh, material. So in this way, we can achieve the decoupling condition and the two MRI coils are um, effectively decoupled. Okay, in order to prove uh, the numerical, um, uh, sorry, the, the theoretical approach, we uh, implemented a numerical test case, uh, which is a double tuned radio frequency coil for a seven Tesla scanner. So two uh, square loops concentric, uh, tuned one at the larval frequency of the proton, and the other loop, uh, the inner one uh, at the sodium frequency, around 80, 80 megahertz. So we designed a six ton spirosonator uh, with external dimension of 13.7 and 6.7 millimeter, like the one that we have shown before, that resonate at 300 megahertz um, and um, satisfying the analytically required specifications that we have described. 
So you can see the CST uh, model uh, before the filter insertion and after the filter insertion. So in this case, four um, SRS, um, four spiresonators are enough to, um, to decouple the coil according to the theoretical model. So um, before the uh, filter insertion, a relatively large mutual coupling exists between the two loops and a considerable upshift of the proton coil can be observed, uh, as we can see from the uh, graphs on the right. But the filter presence is able to drastically reduce the coupling uh, that passes from around minus uh, 18 dB to um, more than minus 40 dB. And we can restore also the correct proton resonant frequency. Then uh, we um, fabricated a prototype of the double tuned test case coil, uh, exploding PCB uh, technology. So here we can see uh, why this solution can be um, good appealing for a certain point of view, because we can print the spiresonators in the same dielectric substrate. And this can give us a um, very uh, robust and repeatable fabrication process. Um, as we can see, the filter proved efficient in the decoupling, also in the experimental measurements. Uh, so uh, we can observe the good agreement uh, uh, with simulations. Then uh, we um, extend the analytical uh, model that we have uh, presented before also to arrays of MRI coils. Uh, and we um, verify the model uh, on a test case. Uh, so a three coil planar uh, proton array for seven Tesla MRI scanners. In this case, we use three elements, uh, three planar elements to demonstrate the um, feasibility of the coupling, not only uh, adjacent coil, but also the so-called next, uh, uh, next nearest couple of coils. So um, not only the coupling between the element one and two and one and three, but also the decoupling between elements two and three. So a proper decoupling filter using spiresonators, uh, also in this case, has been added. And as evident from the numerical simulation, the mutual coupling level passed from around minus 5 dB without filter to around uh, minus 20 dB thanks to the uh, filter actions. And also in this case, we uh, fabricated the prototype, exploding the same, um, the same um, technology that we have seen before. So we print over a dielectric substrate the, um, the coils and the filter. And as evident, the experimental measurement are in good agreement uh, with, uh, with simulations. And as mentioned, one of the major advantage of this, of this technique is the possibility to print the decoupling spirals on the same dielectric substrate of the RF coils. So the um, fabrication process is repeatable and robust. Okay, um, now let's move to the uh, second topic of the presentation, uh, which is the use of uh, magnetic metasurfaces for performance improvement in uh, wireless power transfer application. Okay, okay now um, as done before for MRI, uh, let's uh, just briefly introduce a resonant inductive wireless power transfer. So we can say that this is a, a very fast growing branch of electromagnetic research nowadays, because we have an ever increasing need for contactless and um, charging systems. So we know, uh, for example, that uh, we use this technology for rechargeable devices, automotive applications and biomedical implants. Uh, for a, from a physical point of view, the technique exploits paradise induction law. So we have uh, an actively fed driver coil which produces a time bearing magnetic field that concatenates through a passive receiver coil. And um, in this way, uh, voltage potential is induced on the receiver terminals, and this can guarantee a certain current flowing uh, in a useful load placed at the receiver. Of course, we can uh, um, make an equivalent circuit of this simple driver receiver system. And two main quantities, which is the efficiency and gain can be derived from this uh, uh, simple circuit. Okay, uh, now the point is that um, uh, wireless power transfer um, has, a, has a weakness, which is the, um, the distance, the um, real useful operating distance because uh, magnetic near field decays from the active coil proportionally to the cube of the distance uh, from the um, relative to the passive receiver coil. This means that um, 
efficiency drops uh, really, really quickly when uh, driver and receiver uh, um, are moved far away each other. For this reason, a significant research effort was directed in the literature to um, improve both efficiency and working distance in this kind of applications. And the most common um, solution that has been derived are the three or four coil systems, uh, metamaterials and metasurfaces, as we will see. Um, what is called paramagnetic response, Bessel beam launcher, just to mention the most popular examples amid uh, the developed solution. Now, in particular, we are interested in uh, magnetic metasurfaces that consist in uh, uh, bidimensional arrays of subwavelength uh, magnetic resonators that can uh, modulate the permeability of, of the medium, of the equivalent medium in which the driver and receiver are placed. So in particular, we here in proposed an ultra thin and compact metasurface to enhance WPT performance, both in efficiency and working distance. Um, okay, uh, we know that the non-natural permeability properties uh, and in general, all the properties of metamaterials and metasurfaces are given by the resonant nature of the single unit cell. Now, since we are uh, dealing with a uh, magnetic field and in particular with um, wireless power transfer, we need a strong magnetic response. So it is required a high value of the unit cell inductance. For this reason, we propose a connected double spiral as you can see from, from the CAD model, in which the current can flow with the same direction and without interruption. And this structure is particularly thin, just one millimeter thick. The uh, operative frequency that we have chosen is around six megahertz. So uh, this means that it is very thin with respect to the wavelength. Now, in order to characterize the superficial magnetic susceptibility, we follow the theory developed by Holloway. So by using periodic boundary condition, uh, we simulate the infinite slab condition. And as expected, we found a significant magnetic susceptibility all in the direction perpendicular to the unit cell plane. This means that the only way to excite such structures is through a normally concatenated magnetic field. Uh, now, obviously for a practical realization, we need to truncate a slab to maintain the dimension finite. And we choose a six by six array as a compromise between uh, metasurfaces requirements, sides and losses. In particular, each unit cell is around 10 millimeters uh, diameter. So the, the proposed array is six by six centimeter. Okay, at this point we have our, our surface. So we realize the WPT test case, uh, a fed driver and a passive receiver, uh, identical and resonant at the same frequency. And the resonant frequency has been chosen in order to match with the magnetic resonance of the adopted slab, which is 5.65 megahertz, as we have seen from the graph uh, before. In this way, we can maximize the WPT uh, performance. So we compare the WPT performance in two cases without and in presence uh, of the metasurface. And uh, in order to preserve the useful working distance, which is the space between the transmitting side and the receiving side, the slab, which is only one millimeter thick, is placed just above the driver. Now the extremely reduced thickness with respect to the wavelength is fundamental to allow the slab adoption in a real scenario like biomedical implants where the space uh, is considerably uh, limited. Okay, now let's um, discuss some, some results. First of all, we, um, um, we compared uh, from a numerical point of view uh, two cases, the metasurface WPT system and the standard three coil system. The standard three coil system is one of the most common solution used to enhance the performance of uh, uh, wireless power transfer. Uh, now, uh, we observed that uh, we have a significantly lower electric field uh, with the metasurface uh, with respect to the three coil system transmitter uh, and maintaining at the same time the same magnetic field level at the receiver. This means that we can um, design safer devices with the same magnetic field arriving at the receiver, or on the other end, we can increase the magnetic field level at the receiver and maintain the same electric field exposure at the transmitting side. So um, 
Besides, we fabricated also a prototype of the metasurface, um, and we exploit a 0.8 millimeter thick FR4 slab as a dielectric substrate. But now, uh, differently from the MRI case, we glued over the dielectric substrate AWG26 single strand copper wire to maintain the resistive losses low. This is a very important requirement in WPT because uh, we need to maintain losses low to uh, have a good efficiency in uh, transfer the, the power. And um, using a single strand, a single strand uh, copper wire is more, um, um, is more um, efficient uh, uh, instead of using PCB technology. Okay, um, we performed measurements and we observed a, a good agreement between uh, uh, measurement and simulations. Mm, the high mutual coupling enhancement produced by the metasurface with respect to the simple driver receiver setup is evident around the slab magnetic resonance, as you can see from the graph on the right. And we also observed a significant improvement both for efficiency and for the working distance. Uh, we tested two cases, uh, one a metasurface slab close to the driver, and the other case is that uh, two slabs, uh, one close to the driver and one close to the receiver. Now this second solution has even better performance than the first one, but of course uh, um, cannot be used for example for biomedical applications uh, because we don't want a metasurface, which is, however, relatively large with respect to a single uh, to a single receiver inside the tissues. Okay, and um, now uh, we will uh, move to the third topic, the last topic of of the presentation, uh, which is uh, the metasurface's response homogenization, and we can discuss some possible outcomes in MRI and WPT. So um, generally, this is true for uh, wireless power transfer and for MRI. Um, the design of magnetic metasurfaces uh, generally follows the classic electromagnetic theory. So the array is considered infinite in extent during the design procedure, and the response of the surface is studied for an impinging plane wave. Uh, however, in practical application, these hypotheses are commonly not satisfied, especially uh, at relatively low frequency. Uh, for example, as you can see from, from the pictures in this slide, <clears throat> uh, the slab is um, limited in number of the elements. So we have, for example, four by four arrays in MRI or, or a six by six array for the case of WPT. And moreover, um, the structure is excited not by a plane wave, but by a near field source. So consequently, metasurfaces uh, do not practically behave as theoretically predicted. So uh, we introduce an analytical framework to control the response of magnetic metasurfaces to avoid truncation effect. So what we have called response homogenization and overcome the plane wave hypothesis. Just to um, briefly summarize the, the method. So uh, we generally assume that we can have M active radiofrequency coils interacting with a passive metamaterial slab. And the slab can be assumed to be uh, made by N resonant unit cells. So we can build the impedance metrics of the system, and we can in particular work on the subsystem relative to the uh, N equations of, um, relative to the N resonant unit cells. And we can express the current flowing in these cells as a linear combination of a referent currents that we have called Ix. Then we can singularly impose the resonant condition for each cell in this model and finding the, the loading that we have, uh, um, we have to, uh, accomplished in order to guarantee the performance that we have uh, um, theoretically uh, predicted. So um, we developed a numerical test case in order to demonstrate this. Uh, so by manipulating the current coefficient C high that we have seen before, uh, each one corresponding to each array element, we can obtain the desired current distribution. For instance, for instance by setting all the coefficients as one, we can homogenize the metasurfaces response. So this test case comprises a solenoid as a radio frequency coils exciting the metasurface and a five by five metasurface made by spiral resonators. So the solenoid has an 18 centimeter diameter with five tons and is realized with lossy copper wire. And it is made resonant at six megahertz by adding an 81 picofarad capacitor. On the other hand, the five by five metasurface is made by spiral resonators 
And um, each element of this uh, surface is an eight ton spiral coil with a four centimeter diameter uh, made by lossy copper wire. So in a first configuration, uh, we have called it standard configuration, each unit cell is made resonant at six peggers adopting a 560 capacitor, picofarad capacitor. This means that this is the traditional way in which uh, meta surfaces are designed. So uh, each cell is loaded with the same capacitor. Then we applied our theoretical model aiming at homogenizing the currents flowing in each unit cell independently from the position inside the array. So we choose the same current coefficient for each cell and we calculate the capacitor to be added in each cell. What we, have, what we obtained was something that uh, is in good agreement uh, with, um, with full wave simulations. In particular, the first um, two graphs are relative to the standard configuration where the unit cells are equally loaded. So we can see strong truncation effect. Uh, only the center element is perfectly resonating. And this is because the center element uh, uh, experiences uh, an almost ideal infinite uh, uh, slab condition around it, but the other cells um, have not the same boundary conditions. On the other hand, the homogenized configuration uh, presents the cells uh, with the same cir circulating currents. So uh, the truncation effect is avoided. Uh, this significantly affects the magnetic field distribution, which is particularly more uniform in a larger area for the second case. And magnetic resonance imaging can benefit from such approach because a more uniform field over a larger area can increase the signal to noise ratio and the field of view. Moreover, such features can be uh, also extremely important in enhancing the misalignment robustness in uh, wireless power transfer applications. So this is one of the greatest weakness in wireless power transfer when the driver is not coaxially aligned anymore with the receiver. And uh, in this case, we can um, enhance the robustness uh, for this undesired effect. Uh, Daniel, I think uh, yes. th th there is some question from uh, one of our colleagues. I think, yes. let's see you, Victor. Yeah, Daniel, thank you. Uh, I have a question related to this slide and potentially your uh, hypothesis that uh, it can be used for MRI. So yes. if you will place on top of this meta, uh, let's say resonators, that you have the top uh, several resonators and homogenized field distribution, the problem is as soon as you will add material these losses, this homogeneous field distribution will be destroyed. Did you take took it this into account or tell about this? Yes, th thank you for the point because it is very interesting one. Um, now, actually, um, if I correctly understood uh, your point is that um, a biological load, for example, can change the loading condition that uh, is theoretically predicted and so change the homogenization configuration, right? Um, the point is that you can um, consider the biological load in front of this surface and in this way, you can uh, modify uh, the capacitive load that you have chosen in each unit cell in order to guarantee this condition, even at the presence of uh, a biological load, for instance. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. But the problem is that your biological load is different from person to person. You know, if a yes. very similar drop is by resonators, and in our uh, case, we modulated the uh, resonators that, that were uh, on the edge of meta surface. We change the resonance frequency slightly, and in this way we obtain absolutely the same, let's say, homogeneous field pattern. We did it with God, with my PhD student one year ago. But uh, the problem is, as soon as you, as you change the uh, object under study on this, let's say, homogenization uh, of the near field, uh, becomes not very, very, very nice, unfortunately. Okay, yes, yes, the, yes, uh, I understood your point. And I think that uh, you can distinguish two different conditions. One is uh, when you use uh, um, low field MRI, in which the resonant frequency is very low, uh, for example, 1.5 Tesla. In this case, uh, even if the biological sample is different from case to case, the differences are not so particularly important that uh, can change the homogenized configuration. The other case, maybe it's more sensitive, when the frequencies became higher, for example, for seven Tesla configuration, in this case, you can 
uh, have some some effect as you uh, as you are um, discussing. But in this case, the resonators are also very small, and this means that uh, um, uh, if you choose a, a distance of few centimeters from this surface, then uh, the biological lo uh, loads, um, as we have seen for the decoupling case, is not particularly important. Um, and so uh, the resonators are not so um, so affected by the biological load because they are very small then. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, generally uh, I more or less agree with you. I, I will also add uh, the link to our paper in the chat of the Zoom. So, but uh, for sure for wireless power transfer, this approach will be definitely very, very nice. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, we, we also have a question from Stanislav Godowski at the moment. Uh, hello, thank you so much. Uh, Daniel, I'm sorry for another yep. question, but it is uh, exactly for this figure which is shown on the top uh, for mm -hmm. the standard configuration. Can this situation be considered uh, as uh, uh, the, the periodic structure of uh, mutually coupled resonators where we, we see one of the existing collective resonances of the entire structures. Uh, so so I, I mean, uh, is this just one of the possible resonances in the entire structure? And are there any other resonances that could be used? Yes, uh, we, we, yes. Uh, we can say this is the fundamental resonance, uh, but of course, uh, this is the fundamental mode if, we, if you would like to see in this, um, in this way. But of course, uh, uh, this structure can can also have uh, other uh, resonant modes at other frequencies. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, are these uh, modes uh, closely located uh, uh, with, with respect to their resonant frequencies? I mean, uh, are they close enough, or, or they are quite uh, quite distant? Or from uh, yes, this is also depends on uh, um, which which mode you are you are considering, but. Um, uh, since we are we are interested more on the low frequency applications, uh, we, we usually analyze the fundamental mode because, in this sense, uh, it is um, the mode that is, is more useful for for us in our applications. And uh, for example, the next one, how, how far is uh, let's say high order mode from the fundamental one in terms of frequency? Uh, yes, um, actually, in this particular case, we have not analyzed this aspect. Mm -hmm. So we know that the fundamental mode is six megas because we have imposed this with um, with capacitors. But um, the, the the other mode um, of this structure uh, was not analyzed, so I cannot answer your question in a, in an exact way. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you, Stanislav. I, I also had a, a couple of questions uh, regarding to this uh, uh, well this configuration. Uh, first, first one was: Was your homogenization condition uh, is was it the analytical approach that you used, or did you have some optimization uh, for the capacitors that you used in here? Uh, uh, the capacitors are are found by analytical uh, calculation, so no optimization software is run, but just analytical calculation to find out the load, and then the load are placed on the surface. Mm, okay, uh, I mean, because uh, that might answer uh, Alex's question at some point that if you have changed the, uh, if you change the biological load, then you could use some optimization to adjust the capacitors uh, to the particular load, like in in, in place, let's say. Yeah. And the second question was, uh, did you check uh, how this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, homogenized uh, uh, well, homogenization surface affects the uh, specific absor absorption rate in the tissues because uh, yeah. it might be also an issue. Yeah, this is a, an important, uh, a very important point uh, because um, till now uh, we are just um, preliminary analyzed this situation, but as we have seen uh, before for the WPT case and metasurfaces, uh, generally speaking, these surfaces are able to uh, produce a lower electric field level, um, so distributed more um, homogeneously over the surface with respect to a single coil. So we believe that such configuration can have um, a good behavior in terms of SAR deposition. Okay, th thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, there, is, there is another question, right? 
Yes. Yeah, me, uh, I have another question. Very interesting work. So, uh, what about let's say if you will move to the one centimeter because you, you you demonstrate right now magnetic field at certain plane. So, what yes. would be happen if you will go let's say two centimeters above this plane or below? Does this configuration of the near field will change and the, let's say homogeneity coefficient will be changed as well? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Now, um, just to just to have a figure of, of the of the system in this case, as, as we have said, uh, the solenoid has 18 centimeter diameter, and the plane that we have chosen is about 10 centimeters. So, uh, right about half of the of the dimension of the solenoid. Of course, if you move the the plane, um, in this case, you will uh, have a different uh, field configuration because. Um, there is no approach uh, till now to, for example, avoid the magnetic field dis diffraction or other phenomena. So if you move the plane, you will assist to a, a diffraction of the magnetic field as, um, as you will see uh, naturally for a, for a coil. So this is the point. Uh, you can plan, uh, you can plan uh, to have a certain distribution on a certain plane, more or less, that you can uh, have the desired configuration. But uh, if you change the plane, the geometrical um, distribution of the field will change uh, uh, accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK, uh, so now I'll move on. OK, uh, so um, always related to this, um, to this structure, of course, we can uh, also manipulate the current distribution in different way within the array. Uh, for example, we can even plan to uh, add some active component and to play with the surface in terms of reconfigurability. And for example, in this case, we have uh, an example of uh, a possible uh, kind of beam steering capability. Um, so we can uh, power off some cells and power on others. And in this way, we can shape the field um, even uh, maybe in an actively mode. OK, and then uh, this uh, moves to the conclusions. Um, so to summarize, we first proposed a method for um, RF MRI array coils decoupling, exploiting passive uh, resonators as decoupling elements. And uh, we have uh, demonstrated the possibility to print on the same dielectric substrate both the MRI coils and the filter. And this can uh, be useful to achieve a mechanically robust uh, setup. Then we demonstrated some application of magnetic metasurfaces uh, in resonant inductive wireless power transfer highlighting how, how these structures can uh, be useful to enhance the WPT performance and reduce the undesired electromagnetic exposition. In addition, we presented the, the analytical framework to choose the reactive loads in order to homogenize the metasurface response. And this capability can be useful for enhancing the magnetic field uniformity and the field of view and signal to noise ratio in MRI and to realize WPT system uh, more robust as, uh, with respect to misalignment. Of course, future development will be directed to apply this solution to real scenario applications, moving from uh, pure experimental to maybe clinical practice. And of course, we, as um, Professor Agostino Monarchio said, we are open uh, to collaboration. And I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any more questions, I'm, I'm open for that. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Dan Daniel, sorry. Uh, yeah. We that was very interesting to uh, listen to. I have a few questions myself, but I think uh, there is a question from Paulina Capitano. Who was okay. Yeah. Thank you, Nisha. Do you hear me well? Yes, I hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, look, uh, I wonder about the various power transfer application of your metal surfaces. So, as I understood, you considered the case like uh, one transmitter to single receiver application, uh, right? Yes, yes, right. Okay. Uh, however, did you consider the case like one transmitter to many receivers application because you have a quite a uniform magnetic field distribution? So, did you have any study for the multiple receivers? Uh, thank you for the for the observation. Uh, till now, we um, have not explored this possibility, but uh, for sure this can be done because uh, if you are able to achieve a um, uniform uh, magnetic field over a larger area, for sure you should be also able to uh, power more than one receiver. So till now we have no study in this sense, but uh, it is a good, uh, definitely a good idea. Thank you. 
Uh, I, I have actually a comment, uh, comment yes. to Paulina's uh, question and your answer. Could, did you think that you may have uh, like several uh, spots of magnetic field, uh, like you have an, on slide 33, one spot yep. of magnetic field, maybe for several receivers you can make uh, some distribution which have several spots uh, when you have several receivers and that might increase the efficiency. Yes, for sure. Uh, yes, in this sense, you can create, um, you know, uh, more uh, more than one region that can be activated separately, for example. And in this sense, you can uh, power on um, one element that is placed, for example, close to a certain geometrical position over the surface, and then another one in another position, and so on. Okay, so we have more questions from Stanislav Gabowski first. I think. Yes, thank, thank you again. Uh, the Neil is very nice talk. I also have a, a question concerning the first part, if possible. Um, mm -hmm. You've mentioned that uh, uh, the method you used for decoupling of uh, radio frequency coils, where you install the spiral resonators in between of, of the rectangular loops, mm -hmm. could be beneficial in comparison to other methods. But um, have you? compared it uh, with uh, the uh, overlapping technique, for example, for, for the same coils. Um, what could be, uh, yeah, and in general, it is a kind of resonant method, while overlapping is non-resonant. Uh, what, what benefits, what the main benefits can you, can you say uh, about this resonant method against non-resonant one, which is conventional? Yes, uh, thank you for your, for your question. Uh, now, um, as we have said, uh, there are a lot of different methods that can be applied to the coupled MRI coils. So um, there are a lot of valid solution in the literature for, for sure, uh, as the overlapping method, for example. Uh, we believe that this uh, method can give a little bit uh, uh, more flexibility with respect to um, the overlapping method, for example, because uh, in that method, you have to respect um, the geometrical constraint that uh, um, is useful to cancel the mutual coupling. And in this case, you can place um, coils um, in different uh, arrangement and then choosing the resonators um, that are very small so they can, they can be placed in different positions. Uh, in this sense, you can create arrays with more geometrical flexibility. Okay, thank you. And what would happen if, for example, I bend all the structure, for example, to uh, wrap around the cylinder, will uh, it still uh, decouple in this case, uh, in this modified geometry, or uh, I need to adjust, for example, the frequency of the spiral resonators? Uh, this is also a good question. And um, uh, for sure, if you have, um, for example, conformal shape and not just a planar one, uh, you have to um, consider this uh, when you uh, design the resonators. and. Um, there is no um, technical uh, limit in this sense uh, because you can choose the resonators that with that geometrical arrangement uh, can, uh, can give you uh, the, the useful reactance that is useful to, to achieve the coupling. So uh, this is something that you have to know before. And uh, once you have characterized this, uh, you can for sure um, go forward and, and uh, design your filter. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Stanislav. And we have questions from Pavel Seroyan. Uh, thank you for interesting talk. Uh, my question is the same as Stanislav, but I won't expand this question. So we know the different techniques of decoupling. And first of all, can you open a uh, uh, certain slide? Maybe Gee, previous, yes. uh, previous two, previous. We, we show mathematical models. Uh, which, which slide, sorry? Um, Number 13. Uh, 13, 13. 13? Yes. Okay, okay. With, with one. Well, and okay. uh, I see that the idea is uh, reduce the, the current uh, between a uh, loop. And uh, we know that, uh, for example, preamplifier decoupling uh, techniques are also uh, can reduce with uh, current. And uh, do you compare your method for, for example, uh, preamplifier uh, decoupling? And uh, it, it's first question in uh, our question, um, because there are a lot of techniques, uh, is the method that you propose it, uh, is independent or can you simultaneously with well-known techniques for decoupling? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. 
so actually, uh, we have not compared the two cases um, that you that you have said in the first part of the question. So we have not a comparison between the two the two methods. And then, secondly, of course. Um, I think that uh, you can uh, combine this uh, this method with others method in order to achieve even better uh, better performance for for the coupling. Yes, I think it is possible. Thank you. So uh, I don't see any more hands at the moment. So I'll ask uh, my questions. Can you uh, uh, show the uh, three system decoupling at the 300 megahertz that you had, uh, you hit the graphs of, yeah, I think this one. Uh, okay. Because so, uh, it looks like that uh, the side lobes of the, uh, of the, this S parameter dependence, uh, the ones that are located at around uh, 295 megahertz uh, uh, and 305 megahertz, they are not, mm, to modify it with introducing the decoupling filters. So the, these decoupling filters uh, have quite a narrow bandwidth, right? So they only act at around 300 megahertz. Sure. Right, right. You have a very, very few megahertz bandwidth, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but in general for MRI, that should be quite, quite uh, critical. Because it also acts in a, a very short, small way. Exactly, exactly. So uh, once once point that we are currently working on is to find a way, um, a technological way to um, maybe try to change um, the the tuning of these uh, spirosonators on site. So in this way, we can adapt uh, the, the frequency for the specific uh, load, for example, or specific situation in which the array will be employed. And uh, also, when you uh, spoke about the WPT applications, you mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, the electric field is reduced at the receiver side. Uh, yes. But uh, uh, you didn't have any, uh, what any any specific uh, numbers or images about that. So I'm wondering, did it, is it some integral value of the electric field, or did you check if there is there are any hotspots appearing or what 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 is generally meant by the electric field uh, reduction? Okay, um, so the uh, the electric field reduction is at the transmitting side that we have elaborated, uh, and because uh, we have considered the transmitting side, because um, commonly the highest value of the currents, the circulating currents, are uh, in that in that side, while in the receiver. Uh, generally, uh, the level of currents is uh, relatively lower with respect to the transmitting side. So, what what uh, we uh, um, evaluated um, was the full wave um, electric field level. So, in this sense, uh, you have um, the actual distribution of the electric field uh, um, in the few centimeter from from the transmitting side. And did, did, did it include any tissue simulation or was it just uh, error simulation? Uh, yes, actually we have performed um, a study also um, on, um, on phantoms and we can achieve an SAR level uh, about four or five times lower with the surface with respect to a common solution like, like the three coil, um, the three coil uh, system, for example. So, uh, actually, yes. Um, if you look at our publication here, um, yes, we have done a, a first simulation in this sense. Okay, th th thank you, uh, Danilo. Uh, we, yep. I don't see any other questions at the moment. Uh, yeah, so it was very nice uh, uh, listening to you. Uh, I think, uh, well, if, if anyone uh, has any additional suggestions or any additional uh, work uh, flow suggestions or maybe some collaboration uh, attempts? I think he can, uh, he or she can address you or Agostino. Uh, yes. I think I have emails of you both, so you can either uh, have, see the look up the email in the presentation in the recording or ask me. I can su suggest. I, I can send or out. I think your emails to any collaborators who, any people who want to collaborate with you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, if you have anything to add. Sorry? 
Uh, do, do you have any concluding uh, remarks for, for, for that? Uh, yes, I, I would like again to, to thank you for the, for the invitation. It was for me a real privilege to be here. So um, again, as we have said before, if you have uh, any, any interest in this sense and you want to, uh, you are open to collaboration, you can, you can for sure, um, you know, uh, contact us. Uh, the email, uh, you know, Michael, Michael have uh, our email. So if you want, um, I mean, we are here. <laughs>